Oh, yeah. Huh. Everything will be all right. My Autotep family, welcome to another Sunday online session of NGIA Fellowship of the African Village and Cultural Center. I'm Ray Hagans, your teacher, your friend, your brother, chief elder of the African Village. And I'm excited about us having the opportunity to come together one more time, man. Yeah, once again, we're going to do some learning today. Oh, uh, yeah, so get ready. Get ready. I hope you guys are prepared for today, okay? So let's open up with our song one more time, one more time. God allowed us to come together one more time. Let's lift our voice and sing it like we mean it, all right? Everybody say, one more time, one more time. God allowed us to come together one more time. One more time, one more time, God allowed us to come together. One more time, God allowed us to come together. One more time, one more time, God allowed us to come together. One more time, one more time, one more time, God allowed us to come together, God allowed us, yeah, to come together, to praise God's name, just to praise his name. God allowed us to come together to praise his name, to praise her name, to praise her name. God allowed us to come together to praise his God allowed us, yeah, to sing our song. Just to sing our song, God allowed us to come together to sing our song. To sing our song, sing our song. God allowed us to come together to sing our song. God allowed us, yeah. Now let's put those hands together, come on. To clap our hands, everybody. To clap our hands. God allowed us to come together. To clap our hands. To clap our hands, yes. To clap our hands. God allowed us to come together. To clap our hands. God allowed us, yeah. Everybody say one more time, one more time, God allowed us to come together one more time, one more time, one more time, oh, God allowed us, God allowed us, yeah. Come together one more time. God allowed us to yeah. ah. Just to praise her name. God allowed us to yeah. You've been so good and kind. God allowed us to yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, she did. Ah. God allowed us to yeah. God allowed us. God allowed us. Come together one more. Woo, man, one more time, one more time. God allowed us to come together one more time, brothers and sisters. We're going to go right into those, to the ancestors, and honor those who have made it possible for us to be where we are right now. So let's honor their memory today, okay? 
We don't pray to them, but we honor their memory. Come on, everybody. Oh, ancestors, oh, ancestors. blacker than a thousand midnights, African ancestors, it is to you that we, your children, give respect and honor. Yeah. Oh, ancestors, we call upon you and welcome you in this place. African ancestors, let your presence fill this place. Oh, ancestors, who have been purposely excluded from the history books so that the world would not know of your greatness. Our African ancestors, who gave civilization to the world. Our African ancestors, who gave the arts to the world. Our African ancestors, who gave music to the world. Our African ancestors, who gave sciences to the world. Our African ancestors, who gave mathematics to the world. Our African ancestors, who gave medicine to the world. Our African ancestors, who gave literature to the world. Our African ancestors, who gave philosophy to the world. Our African ancestors, who gave God consciousness to the world. Oh, ancestors, we thank you for devoting your life to make a future for us, your children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. Now stand with us, strengthen us, guide us, teach us, and protect us from the snare of our enemies. Rise up, O oh African ancestors, and let our enemies be scattered, and give us the wisdom and the boldness to deal with our oppressors and those who would hinder the liberation and empowerment of our people. Rise up, O oh African ancestors, and live in us. And we will not fail to honor you. We will not fail to respect you. We will not fail to hear you. And we will not betray you. Ashe. Evo. And now, brothers and sisters, we want to take the time to honor just a few yes. of the great Africans who yes. have gone ahead of us. Yes. We call forth their great African names yes. and honor them to Pharaohs Narmer, Zoja, Sneferu, Khufu, Kafre, oh, Nkare, and the great vizier and physician and multi-genius Imhotep, we say, Ashe. Ashe. To Queen Natokas, Queen Sobek Neferu, Queen Ahotep, ah, Queen yeah. Amos Nefertari, Queen King Hatshepsut, ah. Nefertiti, Queen T, and Queen Nefertari II, yes. we say, Ashe. Ashe. To Menkep and Rautahuti Mays, known as Thutmose III, Amenhotep III, Akhenaten, yes. Tut Ankhamen, Ursa Mahat Ra, Sakhen Ra, Rametsu Meriamen, Ramses II, man. Chewbacca, yes. Tahaka, yes. Hannibal, and the great African warrior Shaka Zulu, we say, Ashe. Ashe. To all of the kings, queens, yeah. priests, and warriors of Nubia, oh, yeah. Waset, Ethiopia, Kemet, Kenya, the Congo, today. Tanzania, Uganda, Central, South, and West al Land, we say, Ashe. Ashe. To the more than 600 million Africans whose lives were lost oh, in the European yes. invasions of Africa uh, and in the Middle oh, Passage, we say, Ashe. Ashe. To the more than 300 million who have since lost their lives to racism and hate crimes, we say, Ashe. Ashe. To Harriet Tubman, Ashe. 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 Frederick Douglass, Ashe. Ashe. Mary McLeod Bethune, Ashe. Ashe. Nat Turner, Ashe. Ashe. Fannie Lou Hamer, Ashe. Ashe. Sojourner Truth, Ashe. Ashe. Carter G. Whitson, Ashe. Ashe. Booker T. Washington, Ashe. Ashe. Dr. Charles Drew, Ashe. Noble Drew Ali, Ashe. Ashe. Benjamin Banneker, Ashe. Ashe. George Washington Carter, Ashe. Ashe. Bishop Richard Allen, Ashe. Bishop Charles Harrison Mason, Ashe. Howard Thurman, Ashe. Brother Mahalia Jackson, Ashe. Bishop the Honorable Man. Marcus Messiah Garvey, Ashe. Bishop Carl Benjamin Williams, May, Ashe. Langston Hughes, uh, yes. Medgar Evans, Ashe. Ashe. Paul Robertson, Dr. Martin Luther King, oh, man. Malcolm X, Thurgood Good Marshall, Ashe. Mother Clara Hale, Dr. Yusef Yakimov, yes. the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, Ashe. Dr. Amos Dr. Wilson, Asa Hilliard. Dr. John Henry Clark, yes. Dr. John G. Jackson, yes. Dr. Shikanta Diaz, yes. Dr. Chancellor Williams, Ashe. Dr. Ah. George G. M. James, Patricia Mumba, Kwame Torre, Kwame Nkrumah, Dr. Khalid Muhammad, Dr. Jacob Yes, yes, yes. Dr. Shaka Musa Barashango, yes. Brother Ray Charles, Ashe. to our mothers and fathers, Ashe. our grandmothers and grandfathers, Ashe. 
to our great grandmother, our great grandfather, our brothers and sisters, sons and daughters, Zella Henson, nieces, nephews, cousins, and all those who have gone away and have made their ancestral transition to their life, deeds, legacy, and contributions, we say, again we say, again we say, Oh, my goodness, brothers and sisters, it's a wonderful thing, man. When we honor our ancestors, you know, we never do anything without honoring them, their life, their deeds, their legacy, and their contributions. We honor them today. A lot of people get it twisted and say that we pray to the ancestors. No, that's not true. We don't pray to our ancestors. We pray to the Most High God, okay? But we do commemorate their aunt, their memory, you know, we we their life. If it had not been for their sacrifice, man, I wouldn't be sitting in this chair right now, you know. So we have to honor our ancestors. I remember the first time we did this at the African Village. The fellowship was so powerful that Sunday. On the way home, I was just giving thanks, you know, uh, for such a powerful fellowship that day. And the ancestors spoke to me and said. It could have been powerful sooner if you had remembered to honor us. And I have not failed to do it ever since then. Whenever we come together, whenever we meet here online or face to face, we do the oath to the ancestors, you know. So, hey, man, what can I tell you? Brothers and sisters, I'm excited. I'm really excited because over the last few weeks, you know, I've been airing uh, messages that I ministered 15, 20 years ago. And the reason why I've been doing that is because i had been requested by several pastors who have been listening to me, Doc, how can I move my congregation to liberation like you did yours? You know, I, I, wanna, I wanna do it without losing my church. And that's where a lot of brothers and sisters are now. And I'm excited about that. Yes, I am. I'm excited because there's an awakening taking place and it cannot be stopped. Okay. So uh, today, of course, is that major religious holiday of the year that you know as Easter. Well, I did a message on this day entitled, If Christ Be Not Risen. If Christ be not risen, and of course, that's not those are not words that I'm making up. That's actually what the Bible says. It says, if Christ be not risen, then our preaching is in vain. Your faith is in vain. Everything we're doing is in vain. If Christ be not risen. So today, brothers and sisters, I want to do a, an examination of the biblical text. And again, I'm, I'm trying to prepare you, especially you pastors who are, are coming aboard, okay? I'm trying to prepare you on how to equip your membership, all right, for African liberation. You have to understand, brothers and sisters, and, 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 and this is for those who ask, why are you quoting so many Bible verses? Well, I'm trying to free our people from that book, and it's so important for you to understand this. I'm trying to free us from that book. But the only way to do that is to go into the book and show them so they can see for themselves the inconsistency, the errors. All right? See, when you've been taught something called the inerrancy of the biblical text, the inspiration of the Bible, the authenticity of the Bible, the canonicity of the Bible, all of these doctrines. When you've been taught all this, you get to the point to where as you take the Bible exactly for what it says, hook, line, and sinker. One of the most damaging things that we have done is we've taken the Bible as a history book. Okay, nothing can be more damaging to your development and growth than thinking the Bible is a history book, okay? Because not one thing mentioned in the Bible, brothers and sisters, 
ever historically happened. Now, I know somebody's having a fit already. OK, so in fact, I think I bet I need to go on and put this up on the screen now. OK, um, and you may want to make a circle with your 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 fingers like this. OK, before I go any further, let's read this what's in this circle. The space inside this circle represents my realm of knowledge. Think about that. All that I think I know about whatever I think think I know is depicted right here within this circle. I must keep in mind that there is more to know than what is within the circumference of my awareness. Do you understand that, brothers and sisters? Okay. I want you to keep that in mind as you listen to me teach, not just today, but whenever you hear me teach. I always start my, my teaching off with that illustration to prepare my listeners, okay, to get ready because I'm going to say something that's outside of what you've been taught to believe. Now, when you hear something that is outside of what you've been taught to believe, it doesn't mean I'm wrong. It simply means that you don't know what I'm talking about, okay? That's all it means. So instead of trying to refute what I'm saying, especially those of you who are here in the chat room, if you don't agree with what I'm saying, then fine. You don't have to agree. You don't have to agree with me. You have the right to remain ignorant if you want to. Okay. You have that right. You have the right to your opinion. You have the right to your belief system. I'm not trying to change your belief. I'm just trying to teach the truth. Okay. I'm just trying to teach the truth. Let me use this illustration before we get into the message. A person once asked me, doc, what do I do with the lie. How do I, how do I hand, what do I do now? Where do I go from here? I mean, because they were really like messed up. And the illustration that Spirit gave me to give to them was don't pour the error out of your life. Like imagine you have a glass and it's full of grape juice, right? The grape juice is all of the false teachings that you were raised on. Now you're finding out that the teachings that you were raised on are not true. So what a lot of people do is they just empty their glass of the grape juice. Don't do that. That's a very dangerous place to be because now you're empty. Okay. Instead, and this is the illustration that Spirit gave me to give to this person when they asked me about this. Take your glass and just turn on the faucet. Right. And hold your glass of grape juice up under a steady stream of water. Got me? And that's where the teaching is coming from, okay? When you just listen to the teachings, just listen, keep listening to the teachings, the water will begin to dilute the lie of the grape juice that's in that glass. And the longer you hold that glass under the stream of water, follow what I'm saying here, right? The longer that you hold that glass under that stream of water, it will dilute and dilute and dilute and dilute. And eventually, guess what? The grape juice will be gone and you'll just have a clear glass of water. That's the method that I like to appropriate in teaching the truth. Okay. So brothers and sisters, those of you who are transitioning, be patient with yourself. Be patient. Okay. As you learn. But today, I want you to get your Bibles. Now, if you don't have a Bible, it's okay because I've taken the time to put the verses on the screen for you. All right? I want you to see what your Bible says. And for those of you who no longer adhere to the Bible because you know better, you still need to know this too, okay? I want you to make note of everything we're saying because you need to know how to go to the Bible with your loved ones and your friends and show them what their Bible says. You don't have to interpret it or anything. Just show them what, just read it as it is, okay? Yeah, and, uh, and let's see what happens, all right? So brothers and sisters, you know, um, let's get ready for the teaching today. OK, of course, before doing that, I want to uh, do what I always do when I share with people. What is my objective? What is my purpose? What is my mission, my personal mission? 
Okay. And you see what it says here. The aim of this lecture is to begin the process. I realize that I, I don't have the time left in life to grow the crops of truth. My job is to plant the seeds, okay, to begin the process of growing into the truth. So my job is to begin the process of undoing and reversing ideas and concepts that have been programmed into the minds of our people by religious statements and church doctrines that have caused us to adopt a belief system or a cognitive reality, right? We've adopted a belief system that have, that's literally has caused us to lose contact with reality. We've lost contact with what is real. We've lost contact with what is factual. We've lost contact with what is historical. And most of all, we've lost contact with what is spiritual. So my job is to begin the process of undoing and reversing all that. All right. So as you listen to the message today, I pray that you will receive the truth. If you can't handle it, and I'm sure there'll be people who can't handle it. However, as I said, as I, as I said previously, don't disrespect the room. Okay. If you don't, if you can't handle what I'm saying, maybe it's not for you. You're free to leave. Just sign off and go someplace else. Okay. Maybe this is not for you. However, if you disrespect the room, you will be deleted and blocked. Okay. Now I want you guys to learn, but I'm not going to allow you to disrespect those who are here to learn, all right? And always remember this, brothers and sisters, because I see a lot of commenting in the, in the chat room. You can't hear if you're busy talking, okay? Remember that. Now, I'm not saying you can't say, you know, teach or ashe or thank you or I'm enjoying this. That's Those comments, simple comments, it's fine. OK, but when you start trying to type a whole paragraph or something because you want to contradict what you what you heard me say, that's not going to work. I will delete and block you. OK, I'm here to teach, not to debate, not to argue. I'm here to teach. OK, so get ready for the message today. All right. Let's hear it as we go forth. Be blessed by this message. Today is what they call Esther. And I gave you the original pronunciation. Esther. Which is spelled E-O-S-T-R-E. -E. And of course, Esther was a pagan European sex goddess and of course the Europeans used to practice this this right thank you thank you very much the Europeans used to practice this thing of this time of the year because it was all about sex it was all about having children fertility that's where the Easter Bunny comes in because when you really get right down to it y'all uh, you, you figure out how does the rabbit fit in to Easter what does the rabbit have to do with Jesus getting up out of the ground right uh, so we got to understand this European pagan practice of Esther where they would actually take their white women and paint them different pastel colors and send them out into the woods naked, painted pink, green, purple, red, yellow, representing the other races on the planet. And they'd run out into the woods and hide. And the men would go out and search for them in the woods and find them. And whatever 
women, painted women they found, they would engage in sexual activity with them. It's a part of their pagan rite of Esther. And as a result of painting these white women and making them go out in the woods and hide and the men would go out and hunt for them and find them, our children today carry out that same practice disguised as what is called the Easter egg hunt, which some of y'all might take your children to today, I hope not. Even though the children don't know that it is an ancient pagan rite. You'd be surprised the stuff we participate in ignorantly. Like Christianity. Ignorantly, because we were raised in it. Like Islam. I didn't get as many amens that time. Ignorantly, because we were raised in it. Like Judaism, or what our people choose to call themselves today, Hebrew Israelites. Ignorantly, because they were raised in it, and we have lost an awareness of who we are. And because we have forgotten, or don't, well, many of us don't know who we are, because we weren't taught who we are, and as a result of forgetting who we are, we look to the literature that our oppressors wrote to find an identity for ourselves. Y'all hear what I'm saying? So what we do is we go to the Bible, we go to the Quran, we go to the Torah, we go to the Talmud, trying to find an identity. And we saw something in the Bible that said that the Jews were God's chosen people. We found that in the Bible, and we found where the Bible said, I have chosen you above all other people on the earth, and thou art a holy and special people unto me. And whosoever blesses you, I will bless them. Whosoever curses you, I will curse them. And we are so low in self-esteem that we thought we'd assume that identity to make ourselves feel special and important. And now we're calling ourselves Hebrew Israelites not knowing that that is a lie, that is a fabrication, that is an epitome because there was nobody called Israel. I didn't even talk about, get to the title, I just started talking and I hope it makes sense to you. There was nobody called Israel. According, if you know your Bible, the guy Israel was known as Jacob. And Jacob, according to the Bible, wrestled with the angel. mind, here we got a human being wrestling with an angel. Right? Right, come on. And he beats the angel. <laughs> Look at somebody and say, there's another idiotic concept in the Bible. <laughs> he beats the angel. Oh, this is deep, man. And because he beats the angel. Now, the angel is a super human being, right? But this little faggotized dude, Jacob beats this angel and God decides to change his name from Jacob. I'm no longer going to call you Jacob. I'm going to call you Israel. But the problem is Jacob was the son of Isaac. Isaac was the son of Abraham who the Bible says never existed. What I want to talk about today, y'all, is a continuation of this madness. I hope it makes sense to you. <clears throat> Many of you here know the truth, so this message may not be for you unless you are a visitor and you're not aware of what our African story is. So if you are a visitor, Please understand, I don't mean to insult your belief system. I don't mean to offend you in any way whatsoever because I've come to learn that you can't reach a person by offending them. So since you understand, I don't mean to offend anybody, I'm going to ask you to do this with me. All right, everybody, those of you who are here, you already know it. Some of y'all already know about heart, but just in case we have some visitors, and of course, those of you who are watching this DVD, I know you need to do this. Repeat after me. The space inside this circle, the space inside this circle. 
Now I need I need y'all to unfold your arms and do this because I'm I because see the very fact that that y'all are doing it telling me you're already having a problem with what I'm saying, and I, I want y'all to hear me today. <coughs> close your eyes if you want to, but you can't close your ears. And everybody say this: once you hear a thing, you can't unhear it. All right, say this please. The space inside this circle, space inside circle represents, represents my realm of knowledge. My realm of knowledge. All, that I I All that I think I know about whatever I think I know is represented right here inside this circle. Must keep in mind that there is more to know than what is within my little tiny circle. Everybody got that? Now, having said that, can I teach you? I'm asking your permission now. Can I teach you? The reason why I'm asking can I teach you is because in order for me to teach you, I have to say something to you that you don't already know. Are we clear? Because if I'm only saying what you already know, then I'm not teaching you anything. You're not learning and I'm not teaching. All right, y'all ready? Minister Stewart, if you will get for me on this day in particular, 1 Corinthians, <coughs> excuse me, the 15th chapter, the 14th verse. 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, the 14th verse. This day is not only known as Esther or Easter among the secular world and the church, but for Christians and religious people, it is also called Resurrection Sunday. Why? Why is it called Resurrection Sunday? Because he rose, he rose, he rose from the dead. He rose, right? That's what we've been taught. I serve a risen Savior, he's in the world today. <clears throat> Excuse me. I know that he is living, whatever men may say. I see his hand of mercy, I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time you need him, he's always near. You know white folk wrote that. <laughs> he lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. Now here's the deep part. You ask me how I know he lives. What's the, what's the answer? He lives within my heart. That's the evidence that he lives. Because he lives within your heart. There's no other evidence, nowhere else. Let's read one of the most powerful verses in the Bible. It is also one of the most dangerous verses in the Bible. It's a verse in the Bible that most Christians don't even know is there. It's 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, the 14th verse. What does it say, Minister Stewart? And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. All right. Everybody repeat after me. If, if Christ, Christ be, not risen. be not risen. Now it's interesting, that's the subject for today, by the way. If Christ be not risen. I'm still dealing with the spirit of being in Ghana, <clears throat> excuse me, and seeing 
the effect that the Roman Catholic Church has had on black people. That should not be too far removed for many of you if you're here in St. Louis because here in St. Louis, Roman Catholicism is a very, very powerful thing. <clears throat> it's St. Louis. It's not just Louis, Missouri. It's St. Louis, Missouri. And George Carey, who was the Archbishop, Roman Catholic Bishop, Archbishop of Canterbury, said, and the London Times recorded it, he said this on April 19th, which was Easter, Easter Sunday of, of 1992. He said these words, and I quote him, Belief in the resurrection is not an appendage to the Christian faith. It is the Christian faith. Let me say that again. Belief in the resurrection is not an appendage to the Christian faith. It is the Christian faith. Did y'all get that? One more time. Belief in the resurrection is not an appendage to the Christian faith. It is the Christian faith. In other words, as Minister Stewart just read, if Christ be not risen, our preaching is vain. And your faith is also vain. If you allow me to transliterate that, what it's actually saying is this. If Jesus did not really get up out the grave, this whole thing is a lie. Y'all got that? If Jesus did not get up out the grave, this whole thing is a lie. Wow. Okay, we got a problem. We got a big problem. Let me tell you right now at the top of the story, Jesus did not get up out the grave. Okay? I know that was like hitting some people in the face with a sledgehammer. And I got news for y'all, for those of you who have a problem with what I just said, if you can prove in any way whatsoever with validity that he did get up out the grave, I put the same challenge out I've always put out, I'll pay all your living expenses from now to the day I die. If you can validate the resurrection of a so-called Jesus Christ, I will pay, I'm putting this out to the whole world, I will pay all y'all's living expenses <laughs> from now to the day I die. To my friends who I grew up with, who are really disturbed with me right about now, and who will listen to me in secret, I'm talking to y'all too. Okay? <clears throat> For almost two millennia, for almost how long? Two Which is how long? Two thousand years. For almost two thousand years, the Roman Catholic Church, which by the way, all Christian churches came out of that. Okay, whether you're Presbyterian, whether you're Methodist, whether you're Baptist, whether you're Episcopalian, whether you're Lutheran, whether you're Church of God in Christ, whether you're Church of Christ, Church of God, the four square corner church for whatever they call it, Primitive Baptist, Southern Baptist, American Baptist, National Baptist, Progressive Baptist, all of y'all. All of y'all Catholic. 
You don't realize you are simply because y'all don't confess your sins to your preacher. Some of y'all do. It's amazing he ain't confessing his sins to y'all. <clears throat> Who does he confess his sins to? That ought to tell y'all something. Whoever the preacher confesses his sins to, that's who y'all need to be confessing y'all sins to. If he, can call, if he can go to God, you can go to God. Am I making sense? Wow. The Roman Catholic Church for almost 2,000 years has taught that Jesus was crucified, died, and was bodily resurrected. Not just spiritually resurrected. Bodily resurrected means he returned to life in his original body that was put, supposedly put into the ground three days later. This is what's been taught, man. This has been long the foundational belief, not knowledge, but belief of Christian people. And there's something about believing in this thing that does not make sense, that gives them a sense of glory and happiness and empowerment. It doesn't make sense, but you believe in it. Along with the virgin birth that this woman had a baby without a man helping her. Atonement that because he shed his blood that all your sins are paid for. And the second and future coming of, of, of Jesus. Can, can, can we look at some contradictions? Let me ask y'all a question. How many contradictions do you need before you understand that something is fallible or there's a fallacy to it? How many contradictions do you need? Everybody got one finger up. Good. Let's, let's, let's find a contradiction right quick. Okay, now let's look at the Bible. Those of you who don't have your Bible, just listen real carefully. But if you will, let's go to the book of John, Minister Stewart. I want y'all to listen carefully to these accounts here. The book of John, the 20th verse. Now before she even reads that, I'm sorry, 20th chapter. 20th chapter of John, everybody say this with me. Repeat after me. The, the gospel according to John, the gospel according to John is a forgery. <laughs> I hope, hope y'all don't mind me just coming raw today, but I don't feel, I, I'm, not, I'm not feeling the best, so I ain't got time to be beating around the bush, okay? But believe me when I tell you, if you can invalidate what I'm saying, I promise you, I will pay all your living expenses. I can't, I don't know the better challenge than that. Listen, if somebody told me that all I got to do is prove what they said wrong, they pay all my living expenses, trust me. For the next three days, I wouldn't be—I wouldn't do nothing but find the proof that he's lying. Cause see, I know after I find the proof, I ain't gotta pay rent no more. I ain't gotta pay electric bill no more. I ain't gotta pay a car note no more. I ain't gotta pay no food, clothing, expenses no more. Cause he gonna pay them for me. That's better than a lottery ticket. I'm giving y'all a guarantee. Now, I don't want to make y'all think I got money. But I'm saying that because I know you can't find anything to invalidate what I'm saying. Trust me, I tried it for five years. When I came into the knowledge that everything I've been preaching was a lie, from 1993 to 1998, I tried to prove, tried to find one thing. Man, the sink. And the only thing I could find was I, the, the more I searched, the more I saw how much I was lied to. By the bishops and the presiding elders and my own parents. They didn't know. They didn't know. They were dumb. You know what the problem was? They were teaching me what they what somebody taught them. 
And when y'all sit in churches and pulpits, y'all out there watching me. When y'all sit in churches and pulpits, that's exactly what's happening. The dude in the pulpit is telling you what somebody told him. That's called hearsay. Damn, that's deep. <laughs> Living your life on hearsay. No wonder we gossip so much. <laughs> that's, that's, explain, that's why we gossip so much. We our whole life. Man, that's some deep stuff. Think about that. I just said, think about, think about your whole life is built on hearsay. Look at somebody say, that ain't cool. That's why we don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> Minister Stewart, <laughs> chapter, 20th chapter John, before we read about the resurrection account, I told y'all the book of John was a forgery. Yeah. Any scholar, any second year Bible college scout student will tell you that the book of John was added into the Bible centuries, centuries after all these other so-called books. And it had to be added for a particular reason. What was that reason? John, the 30th verse, Minister Stewart, verse 30 and 31, what does it say? And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book. Meaning in the book of John, not in the Bible, in the book of John. Now notice the 31st verse. The 31st verse actually tells you why they compiled the gospel according to John and put it in the Bible. It actually tells you why they did it. A lot of people look right over this. It actually tells you why they actually made this book up and put it in the Bible. What does 31st verse say? But these are written. These, or this book was written, why? That ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Did y'all get that? It's right there in black and white. They're actually telling you the reason why this was written is so that you might believe, not that you would know, but that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. And that's what, that's what has controlled our thinking. Now, remember, keep, keep in mind what she just said, and now you'll understand why I coined this phrase. Repeat this after me. He who controls the printed page, he who controls, the printed page controls the thinking of the age. Did y'all get that? In other words, the, the European historiography is what controls the thinking of the masses. They wrote it and told you it came from God and you believed it and they're controlling you like a dog on a leash. Now, let's go to the first, first verse of the 20th chapter. Let's talk about this so-called Resurrection Sunday. Go ahead, Minister Stewart. First one? Yes. The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early. Cometh who? Mary Magdalene. And who else? There's nobody else there but Mary Magdalene, right? By the way, this is supposed to be this is supposed to be the woman that Jesus married, by the way. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. No, he didn't either. <laughs> Jesus didn't have no wife. See, that's the problem. It's, that's some deep stuff how our minds are so messed up. We actually get angry over the idea that Jesus had a woman. You don't like that idea. You can't conceive that. You can't process that. Now my Lord and Savior didn't have no woman. And you want to know why the spirit of faggotism is in the church so strong. Well, he did not have a woman. He didn't have a woman because he didn't exist. But suppose that he did exist According to the Bible, Mary Magdalene was his woman. 
And the folk don't like that because Mary Magdalene was a prostitute. Y'all follow what I'm saying? How could Jesus marry a prostitute? What's wrong with y'all? How dare you say such a thing? You got this lie. You done, you done elevated the lie so high that any challenge to make you think about the lie, you get angry with the person that's making you think. Y'all hear what I'm saying? So, the first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene. Go ahead, Minister Stewart. Now mind you, according to this verse we just read, only Mary Magdalene was there. Mary Magdalene didn't say nobody else, right? Okay, and then it goes on to say, while it was yet dark. Isn't that what it says? Now I want you to keep these points in mind. One person came to the tomb and it was still dark. Go ahead. Unto the sepulcher and see the stone taken away from the sepulcher. Then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved. Now, according to what she's reading so far, one woman came to the tomb while it was still dark. The sun had not come up yet. And when she saw that the stone was rolled away, she did not go inside. She saw the stone was rolled away and she immediately took off running and went and told other brothers what happened. Right? Go ahead. And say unto them, they have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre. She didn't say he's risen. Mm -hmm. She did not say he is risen. She said they stole him. Somebody stole his body. You got me? Okay, go ahead. And we know not where they have laid him. Okay, and they don't know where he is. Go ahead. Peter therefore went forth and the other disciple and came to the sepulchre. Uh-huh. So they ran both together. Here come Peter and some other disciple. They're going to come running to the tomb. Go ahead. And the other disciple did outrun Peter. Whoever this other disciple is, <laughs> he was so angry about this that he outran Peter. <laughs> he got there first. Are y'all seeing this here? See, you know, I, really, when you really just take your time and read this like we're doing right now, you see how stupid it is. But we didn't take our time and read this. We just heard, he got up! <laughs> With all power in his hand. <laughs> Go ahead, read for this story. And he stooping down and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying, yet went he not in. So the first dude that got there looked into the tomb and he saw that the clothes that he was wrapped in was there, but there was no body. Go ahead. Then comes Simon Peter following him and went into the sepulchre. I can see Simon Peter now, man. I ain't know you can run so fast, man. <laughs> Oh, uh, ain't, ain't nobody in there. You got the picture? Okay, go ahead. And see the linen clothes lying, and the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, go ahead. wrapped together in a place by itself. Continue. Then went in also that other disciple, which came first to the sepulcher, and he saw and believed. Believed what? <laughs> What did he believe? It wasn't nothing to believe. What he was told was somebody stole the body. You got me? So what is he believing? Go ahead. Oh, I know what I just heard a preacher talk. He believed what the Lord had said before. <laughs> he you know, you know the Lord did say that he was going to get up on the third day. So that's what he believed in. Okay. Go ahead. Verse 9. For as yet they knew not the scripture. 
that he must rise again from the dead. Uh oh, that just cancels out what I just said. Now don't. <laughs> Now that's some deep stuff. Check this out. They went home. They came, saw the body had been stolen, and they went home. Oh well. It's a wrap. They done, they done stole him. We don't know where he is, so there ain't nothing we can do about it. It's all over with. Let's go on home. Let's go get a beer, brother. Come on, man. Got this? But his woman didn't take it so easily. What is it going to say? But Mary stood without at the sepulcher weeping. The brother said, let's go, man. Let's go. He's all hating. Come on, man. Ain't none of us hanging around here. Let's go on home. Ain't nothing we can do about this. It's over. You know how the brothers are. See, brothers here, you know. Hey, man. It's eight. Hey, hey. Dude ain't here, so let's go, you know. But Mary stood there having a fit, crying. And go ahead. As she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulchre. Now, now she decides to finally take a look in. When she first got there, the stone was gone, she took off running. Now she decides to look in, right? Okay. And see two angels in white sitting. I love how they always have angels dressed in white. <laughs> Sitting. One at the head, go ahead. One at the head and the other at the feet. Yes. Where the body of Jesus had laid. Yes. And they said unto her, Woman, why do you decide? Why are you crying? She said unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord. Because they somebody stole his body. And I know not where they have laid him. Okay. And when she had thus said, she Herself back and saw Jesus standing. Uh oh. <laughs> Go ahead. And knew not that it was Jesus. Now, this is her man. <laughs> this is her man, right? Okay. She turned around and saw this dude standing there. Okay. And she didn't know it was her husband. Go ahead. Jesus said unto her, uh -huh. Woman, why do you stop? Whom seekest stop? Now, why are you going to ask these dumb questions? <laughs> okay, I mean, who else would I be looking for, okay? And, and you know, who, who, wasn't you laying in here? <laughs> Go ahead. She, supposing him to be the gardener, said unto him, how do, you, how do you confuse your man with the gardener? The caretaker of the of the of the, 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 the cemetery. Go ahead. Y'all relax there. Y'all relax. Go ahead. Uh, she supposed to be the gardener said unto him, Sir, if thou have borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Yes. And Jesus said unto her, Mary, she turned herself and said unto him. Rabbi, Rabboni. Rabboni, thank you. Yes. Which is to say, Master. Now this is deep. He just asked her a question. Woman, why are you crying? Who are you looking for? And she thought he was the gardener. Now he says to her, Mary. <laughs> and now she knows who it is. Maybe nobody could say Mary like she did. You might have had a Barry White kind of voice. <laughs> now check how deep this gets. Now go ahead. Jesus said unto her, touch me not. Okay, now check this out. Check, this is deep. This is important. This is important evidence in this case. Can we take this to court? She recognizes this is my man. And she gets ready to put her arms around her man. And he said, don't touch me. Can't touch me. Why can't she touch him? 
For I have not yet ascended to my Father. Don't touch me because I haven't ascended to the Father yet. In other words, like if you touch me, there's so much glory over me. There's so much power over me. There's so much divinity in me right now that if you touch me, you won't be able to handle it. You will die. So don't touch me because I have to ascend. Y'all see this? Yes. Don't touch me, God, and sins and Father, but do what? But go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father and your Father and to my God and your God. Go tell the brothers that you've seen me and I'm getting ready to ascend to the Father in heaven. This is the concepts that we have in our mind. Y'all got those facts there? All right, now let's compare. Turn to Matthew. Twenty-eight. Verse 1. You remember the, the facts of the first presentation? Right? Okay. I asked y'all, how many contradictions do you need before you know something is not right? Everybody held up one finger. All right. Let's read. Matthew 28, verse 1. In the end of the Sabbath. In the end of the Sabbath. As it began to dawn towards the first day of the week. As it began to dawn. Now what did the first account say? While it was still dark. Right? Okay. The sun is coming up now. Go ahead. Came Mary Magdalene. Came Mary Magdalene. And the other Mary. Wait a minute, now wait a minute, whoa, 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 whoa. I just asked you in the first account, Mary Magdalene and who else? And there was nobody else. So now, Jesus' other woman <laughs> is coming along with Mary Magdalene. This is Mary, you know, the Mary and the Martha. Mary and Martha, y'all remember them? Okay. Well, see, Jesus supposedly married them too. Yeah, oh yeah, y'all didn't know that? Yeah, in fact, they put out a movie about it some years ago. It was called The Last Temptation of Christ. Didn't y'all see, how many of y'all saw that movie? Yeah. And in that movie, they supposed to tell you that, you know, he didn't really die on the cross. He came down off the cross and married, married Mary and Martha and had children by them. So he had three wives. Now you see why they banned the movie. Couldn't take it. Just the mere, mere idea, not only of him having a prostitute as a wife, but him having more than one wife? Oh, come on. That, that. Mm -mm. Couldn't handle that, man. They boycotted that movie all over the world. Read. And behold, there was a great earthquake. Oh, now we got an earthquake, okay. <laughs> Now mind you, in the first account, okay, there was nobody seen at first. She came and saw the stone had rolled away and took off running. Got the brothers, they came back and looked in the tomb and they saw two angels dressed in white inside the tomb. Now here, these two women, two women, okay, which are really are, are Isis and Nephthys and ancient comedic thought. That's where this whole thing stolen from in the first place. Y'all get me? Here we got an earthquake and the angel of the Lord descended from heaven. Go ahead. And came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. Now, this is some deep stuff because now these two women here, and they actually see the angel of the Lord coming down because the stone has still got the tomb sealed. And the angel comes down and he rolls back the stone and sits on top of the stone. Go ahead. His countenance was like lightning. Countenance, yes. And his rampant white stone. Yes. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead. In other words, the caretakers in the cemetery, these are men now, saw this, this being of light 
sitting on top of this stone. Y'all bear with me as I talk this stupidity for a moment, will you? Because it's so stupid, I'm getting frustrated talking about it. But I want y'all to see how confused we are and the mess that we've been believing and got us messed up here. So you can go share it. Go, go tell your family, you know what? This brother said some stuff to me that I've never thought about before. Let me share y'all with y'all right from the Bible what he shared with me so y'all can stop believing this dumb stuff. This being sitting on top of the stone, the caretakers who were brothers, men, got scared. And not only did they get scared, they got so scared that they passed out. Fainted. That's what it means they became as dead men. They fainted. Go ahead, fifth verse. And the angel answered and said unto the woman, the, the, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. Oh, this is deep now. This angel did not ask, who are you seeking? I know why y'all are here. Don't be afraid. Y'all are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. Now, this is some deep stuff. He is not here. For he is risen. As he said. Everybody ask yourself this question. Say with me. When did he get out of the tomb? When did he get out of the tomb? Because the stone was still there when the ladies got there. See, I don't drop the case already. <laughs> According to what we just read, the angel came down and rolled the stone away. Right? So where did he go? How did he get out of the tomb? It was still sealed. Now, you know what most church folks say? I can hear it right now. I hear them saying it. Well, there ain't nothing too hard for God. <laughs> ain't nothing too hard for God. He, he was God. He could get out without rolling the stone away. Come on, people. Y'all see how we made the thing? Read quickly. Come see where the see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. Yes. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall you see him. Lo, I have told you. Now wait a minute. I thought that we just read that Jesus talked to Mary in the, in the tomb. Now we're reading he done left, y'all. He already on his way into Galilee. So go tell the disciples that that's where he's going to be. Read. And they departed quickly from the sepulcher with fear and great joy and did run to bring his disciples' word. Now repeat after me. They left the tomb with fear and great joy and told his disciples what they had, what they had seen. Remember that. Remember that. Ninth verse, go ahead. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, All hail. And they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Then said Jesus unto them, Be not afraid. Go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee, and there shall they see me. Okay. For the sake of time, let's move forward. Go to Mark now. And let's see how this lie comes out. Mark 16. Verse 1. And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, had bought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. Oh, so now they're telling us the reason why they came. Here's the problem. You see, and that wasn't an uncommon thing to go and because it was a rush ceremony, so they're going to take spices and wrap, you know, anoint the spices to help get rid of the bad odor because they didn't have embalming fluid back then. Got what I'm saying? So they're going to anoint him with the spices and everything so his body's not stinking and da 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 da. But the problem is, why are you going to the tomb to anoint him when the tomb was sealed? You know, just like today when, you, when, they, when they lower the casket in the grave and then they put him in, in what they call a vault and then they, they put the, the big cement top on the vault right there in front of you, okay, and you know it's there, what, what, why are you going to go back and try to do something to the body? That doesn't make any sense. Read. 
And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came unto the sepulchre at the rising of the sun. Okay, now the sun is uh, coming up. Go ahead. And they said among themselves, Who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the tomb? You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? Everybody said poor planning. Poor planning. You come in to anoint this body, but the tomb is sealed. So on your way to the tomb, you're asking yourself the question, who gonna roll the stone away for us? Go ahead. And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away. Yes, go ahead. It was very great. Yes. And entering into the sepulchre, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothing, clothed in a long white garment. Okay. And they were affrighted. Okay. And he said unto them, be not affrighted, you see Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. Mm -hmm. He is risen. He is not here. Okay. Behold the place where they laid him. Okay. But go your way. Tell his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee. Mm -hmm. There shall you see him as he said unto you. Now check out this a verse. As I state my case. What does it say? And they went out quickly and fled from the sepulchre. They went out quickly and ran from the tomb. For they trembled and were amazed. For they trembled and were amazed. Now here is the, 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 the line that says you have to throw this thing out of court. What does it say? Neither said they anything to any man. For they were afraid. Did y'all miss that? Look at somebody next to you and said, according to the Bible, they did not tell anybody. Now look back at the same person said, according to the Bible, they told the disciples. Is it a contradiction? Would this stand up in court? It won't even stand up in your own mind. Now what's really interesting here is verse 9 through 18 or 9 through 20 goes on to talk about what happened thereafter. But the problem is, verses 9 through 20 were added into the Bible after the book of John was added into the Bible. If you look at verses 9 through 20, if you guys got a red letter edition of the Bible, it's supposed to be the words of Jesus. Right? How did Jesus say all this? if it was added into the Bible. I just presented some stuff to y'all that pretty much invalidates the validity of a so-called resurrection. Brothers and sisters, on this day, we need to understand that we need to exercise common sense. Everybody say common sense ain't so common no more. Let me show you what I'm talking about. If, if this had actually happened, according to the Gregorian calendar under the Roman Catholic Church, the year of Jesus' death would have been 30. What year did I just say? 30. 30. Now, let me, there's another in, in, inconsistency here. Because how old was he supposedly when he died? Oh, y'all know this. He was supposedly 33 when he died. Right? But according to the Gregorian calendar, he died in the year 30. Which means he would have had to have been born when? Come on, do the math. He would have had to have been born 3 B.C. Right? 
Y'all know what BC stand for? <laughs> BC stands before Christ. BCE stands before the common era. So how is he going to be born before he's born? <laughs> you see what I mean when I say we don't think? But let's go with them for a moment. Here's what I want y'all to grab this. I know you never thought about this before. I want y'all to go out and share this with other people and mess up their ass there. <laughs> According to the Gregorian calendar, he would, he would have died in 30 CE, which means, according to the Gregorian calendar, the resurrection before Esther Sunday, the Friday before Esther Sunday, which is the day he was supposed to have died on, right? Good Friday. Y'all with me? That date was April the 7th in the year 30. Write that down. April 7th. 30 A.D. April 7th. Which means that his resurrection would have been on what day? April what? Well, April the 7th was a Friday. So the resurrection would have been April 9th. But yet he's supposed to be in the grave for three days. Thank you. Idiotic concepts. Don't make sense. He died on April 7th, was raised from the dead supposedly on April 9th. What's today's date? Today is April 8th. Why is it that every dog on year, they, they straight with his birthday? They don't get that birthday wrong. Every year, December 25th is the birthday of Jesus. That don't change. Christmas Day is Christmas Day, December 25th. I don't care if it's a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I don't care. Eight, December 25th is December 25th. April 9th should also be the same way. Why is it that his doggone resurrection date keeps changing. <laughs> Christmas don't always come on a Sunday. December 25th can be any day. Why is it that April 9th, which would have been the day of his resurrection, is always falling? Well, April 9th ain't always on a Sunday. You see, today ain't April 9th. So how is it his doggone resurrection anniversary keeps falling on Sunday? Are y'all getting this? Yes, yes. Are y'all thinking? Yes. Are y'all seeing what I'm saying? See, this really has nothing at all to do with somebody getting up out the grave. That's right. That's right. Ain't got nothing to do with that. And it's important to understand these facts, these things I'm presenting to you, because the message today is, if Christ be not risen, then the whole thing is a lie. I'm, I can't describe to you how infuriated I am with what has happened to the minds of African people because of what the Roman Catholic Church forced on us. I may have shared this with you. I was driving to Atlanta from here, going down Interstate 24 in Tennessee. And it was right after I entered into the state of Tennessee, maybe 20, 25 miles into the cross the state line, white folk talked to me. I know they're white folk, because of what it said. White ancestors spoke to me while I was driving, clear as a bell in my head, and said, why are you angry with us? And it, it was such a strong question that I had to start communicating back with this thing in my mind. I'm thinking, why are you angry with us? 
Why am I angry with y'all? And he spoke to me and said, why are you angry with us for lying? That's just how it came to me, man. Why are you angry with us for lying? Then they said, that's what we do. I mean, that's just how it came to me, man. You angry with us for lying. That's what we do. And then they spoke to me and said, who you ought to be angry with is your own people. Because they keep believing the lies that we made up. So that's why I talk the way I do. I've decided, y'all, I'm not going to get angry with a fish for swimming. I've decided I'm not going to get angry with a dog for barking. I've decided I'm not going to get angry with a snake for crawling. I'm not going to get angry with a mosquito for biting. You know why? Because that's what they do. That's what they do. But there's no excuse for brothers and sisters who are the sons and daughters of Mother Africa. There's no excuse for you to continue to hold on to the lies and the stupidity and the religious teachings and doctrines that were forced upon your ancestors. There's no excuse for that. There's no excuse for you to say, I'm going all the way with Jesus. <laughs> Even if it costs my life. There's no excuse for that, man. See, y'all y'all weren't where I was a couple of weeks ago in the dungeons of the Cape Coast and Amina Castles where the Christians, Christians, forced this madness on our people in the name of Christ and took them right outside those doors and put them on the very first slave ship, which was called Jesus. Y'all don't know this. All you know is you're a sinner, saved by grace. If it hadn't been for the Lord on my side, tell me where would I be? That's a daggone shame that black folk have to ask a question Wondering if it had not been for a fabricated figure of the Roman Catholic Church on your side, where would you be? Look at somebody and say, we really messed up. And it's time for us to get it right. I close with, with these points to you. Well, there's one point, really. Brother Ray, why do we need to get it right? That's an awesome question. I want all the children in this room to stand up. Y'all have all the children in the room stand up. And all of the adults in this room, here's what I want you to say. Point to one of these young people and say, we got to get it right, get it right. For, their for their sake. We got to get it right for them. For them. We got to get it right. You know why? Because if we don't get it right, they are going to go through the same mess yes. 
that we're going through now. Young people, you can be seated. Thank you. We got to get it right for them. We cannot allow this mess to get into their heads like it was in our heads growing up. Y'all hear what I'm saying? No, Jesus did not get up out the grave, period. So since he didn't get up out the grave, yes, the whole thing y'all been practicing is a lie. Yes, I'm sorry to be the one to hurt your feelings like this. Your mama should have told you better, but she didn't know any better. My mama didn't know any better, but now that I know better, my job is to tear down the lie that has been given to us, that's been designed to hold us back. Are y'all grabbing what I'm saying? I know it's not gonna make me popular, I don't care about that. I care about you being free, black people. Man, shoot. Get rid of this sickness. Because as long as you have this sickness in your head, now I'm talking really to those who are watching. Many of you here, unless you are a visitor today and don't know any better, as long as you carry this sickness in your head, you will not do one thing to bring change in our society. And the reason why you won't do anything is because you're waiting on the Lord to do it. Y'all hear what I'm saying? You've already decided that this world ain't your home anyway. You just a stranger passing through. Your home is in glory. That's where you going. Well, it's really deep, y'all, because there was a time that I heard a woman, the first person I think I remember really hearing say that, her name was Alice Walker. And when she first said that, she was a fairly young woman. She was my great-grandmother. And she was in her 60s, I think, when I first heard her say that. Well, it's deep because Mother Alice Walker was waiting on the Lord to come back. She was excited and got happy over the fact that he's on his way back. That was her favorite line. You know he's on his way back. He's on his way back. I was a little boy at that time. I am now 58 years old. And he hasn't gotten here yet. Mother Alice Walker is dead and gone. Her children are dead and gone. You follow what I'm saying? Her grandchildren, some of them are dead and gone. Her great grandson said, hell, I ain't going through that. I'm going to tell y'all something differently. I'm going to tell you he ain't coming back. So once you, once you understand he ain't coming back, maybe you'll get up off your behind and realize that the only way change and improvement is gonna come in your life, in your community, in your neighborhood, is if you get up and do something about it. Am I making sense here? Get up off your knees. Stop calling for somebody out there in space to come rescue you. A damn thing for you. If you don't get up and help your children, your children are going to jail. If you don't get up and help your children, they're going to die in the streets of this city. Stop asking God to help you. Look at somebody say, You are God. You do the job. Rescue yourself. I'm shame. You know, I was as I'm along with you listening to <laughs> my own message. Wow. And it's like, wow, man, you know, 
I was thinking as I'm listening, man, how do I describe what I was thinking? I was thinking like when I was doing all this, and again, I'm trying to give an example, brethren, pastors who are coming into the knowledge of the truth. I'm trying to give you an example of how I moved my congregation into African liberation and away from this programming of religion. And uh, man, I'm sitting there saying, Ooh, wow, I was, I was talking kind of hard back then, but I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't trying to be funny. I was trying to build. I was trying to free people from the bondage that they were in. You know, and I look at where we are today. You know how this ministry has grown to reach all over the world. And I thank you, brothers and sisters, for being such loyal supporters. You know, as I said, you know, if you have a problem with what I said, it ain't my fault. I just read, I just read scriptures. Well, Minister Stewart actually read the scriptures. You know, in fact, I told her uh, earlier this week, I said, girl, you going, your voice is going to become known everywhere. You know, and uh, hey, so I'm thankful to Minister Stewart as well, as well as my other ministers for hanging in there with me. My elders, especially the elders who were at the church when I became the pastor of the New Ephesus Missionary Baptist Church, who transitioned and learned with me, you know. Uh, man, it's just, I'm, I'm, I'm honored today. I'm so honored and humbled at the same time to be a messenger, an instrument in the hands of the Most High to free the minds of our people. Yeah. Well, brothers and sisters, those of you who are watching me there on YouTube, I encourage you to go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel. All right. Uh, if you haven't done so, please subscribe, you know, and hit the notification button, the bell, so that when I go live, you'll get a notice that I'm live. Okay. Also, uh, you're invited to log on to our website, theafricanvillage.org. Still in construction, but the, the teaching is there. So if you just go to africanvillage.org or wblr.com. WBLR stands for Black Liberation Radio. Okay, and uh, click the play arrow. You hear me teaching nonstop, 24 hours a day. Okay, with some nice jazz in between each message. Yeah. Okay. So go ahead, man, and uh, you know, and, and do that. Also, if you want to make your donations to help us, and we do need your donations, as you hear me often say, we don't do this for money, but we do need money to do this. Equipment purchases, you know, uh, equipment here in the studio, lighting and computers. I've had to buy several computers over the last couple of years. You know, uh, viruses coming in, all that kind of stuff. So your donations help as well as paying for the bills at headquarters. Yep, that's deep, man. Still got to pay utilities, even though we're not using the building. Isn't that something? We're working on that, too, trying to figure out what the problem is there, you know. But, hey, thank you guys for your support. If you want to make your donation through... Uh, cash, uh, uh, PayPal, as you see on the screen there. Our PayPal address is African Village One, and that's African with a K. A lot of your payments haven't been going through because you're spelling African wrong. African with a K, not a C. African Village Number One at AOL.com is our PayPal address. Okay. You want to make your donation through Cash App? Forgive me, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm tired. I've been traveling like crazy. If you want to make your donation through Cash App, 
Uh, you see the address there, cash tag Dr. Ray Hagens, one G in my last name. All right. If you want to make your donation through Zelle, it's my email address, rayhagens at gmail.com. If you want to mail in your donation by check or money order, the address is there. Go ahead and write it down. The African Village, 3520 North Newstead Avenue, St. Louis, Missouri, 63115. Okay. And of course, brothers and sisters, you know I can't ever end without talking about the greatest organization that I know of. And I'm and when I say you say, well, the African Village is not the greatest organization. Actually, we've partnered together, the African Village with the Black Achievement Fund. Okay, so we've joined hands and we're in essence really one organization now. Okay. Uh, I mean you've still legally two different entities, but we're in union with each other. Come on and become a part of the Black Achievement Fund. If you haven't joined already, okay, come on and be a member. It's only $9 a month, okay? $9 a month, man, you know? $9 a month to support what we're doing there. And you can't go wrong. Trust me, you can't go wrong with it. You really can't. You know, I mean, come on, be a part of the Black Achievement Fund. Okay, and when you when you join or when you register, just let them know that you heard about the Black Achievement Fund from Brother Ray. Okay, and I will get an email telling me that you joined. All right. Yeah. So come on and join and be a part of us. We're having a ball. We're doing great things. And hey, man, we want we want listen at two o'clock. Two o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Okay. Just go to our website, baf.solutions, and listen to our president and founder, Brother R.K. Hodges. Okay. Every Sunday at two o'clock, he goes live to tell you about the vision of the Black Achievement Fund. Okay. So just go to the website, baf dot solutions not not baf.com not dot net dot org none of that okay it's really describing our answer baf dot solutions all right yeah solutions with an s on it okay baf dot solutions come on and join the black achievement fund get on up in here with us all right and you'll be able to be you'll be privy to uh, the things that we're doing, uh, get notifications of our activities and events. Come on, man. We're going to have a great time. We've got some th- things planned in the plan, in the works, and definitely would love for you guys to, guys to be a part of it. Okay? Yeah. Well, family, guess what? It's time for me to get out of here now. Okay? So, of course, we're going to end by singing The African and Me Loves the African and You When We Come Together. Ain't nothing we can't do. You know why? Because you're easy to love. Yeah. Okay. I admire all you guys out there. Thank you for showing your love to me. Yeah. You're easy. You're easy. You're easy to love. Yeah. Thank you for being with me today. All right. I look to see you guys on next week. Same time. Be prepared to learn some more. All right? Come on, everybody. Let's do it. The African in me. Love the African in you. When we come together, ain't nothing we can't do. You're easy. You're easy. Easy to love. Easy to love. Yeah. Let's do the principles of my art. The truth that's in me. Love the truth that's in you. When we come together, ain't nothing we can't do. You're easy. Oh, I'm so glad to be free. Oh, you're easy. You're easy to love. Justice and righteousness. 
Come on, everybody. The justice in me. The justice in me, he loves. The justice in you. When we come together, there ain't nothing we can't do. You're easy. You're easy. Easy to love. You're so easy to love. Yeah. Righteousness. Come on, everybody. The righteousness in me. Love the righteousness in you. When we come together, there ain't nothing we can't do. You're easy. You're easy, yeah, you're easy to love. Let's do the power in me, love the power in you. Everybody, the power in me, love the power in you. When we come together, ain't nothing we can't do. You're easy, yeah. You're easy, you're easy to love. Let's close out with the African in me, close the African in you, all right? Sing it like you mean it, family, as we get ready to go. The African in me, love the African in you. When we come together, there ain't nothing we can't do. You're easy, yeah. You're easy, you're easy to love. Family, once again, I've enjoyed being with you. Thank you for spending your time with me today. Oh my goodness. Share this video, all right? Share the link to this video with your friends, your family. Let's get the word out. This is how we get our numbers up, all right? Let's get the truth out to the world. So we can free our African minds. All right, brothers and sisters, I admire all of you. And until next week, same time, you guys out there stay strong, be careful. All right, I love y'all, man.